Welcome everyone. This is Amr Mushtaq from U Council. Today we'll talk about choosing the appropriate court or tribunal or judicial body uh, when you believe that you have been wrongfully dismissed from your employment and you have a case against your employer. Before we begin, just a quick disclaimer that this course is not legal advice. If you have any specific questions about your issue, you must contact your lawyer or paralegal and if you don't know one, we have provided the link here for Law Society of Upper Canada who can refer you to someone. So you are an employee who have been working in Ontario. Um, you have been wrongfully dismissed and you believe that you have a case against your employer. Um, then where do you go? And this lecture is really directed towards Ontario, um, people who have been living in Ontario. The principles are not much different in other provinces. The only thing you have to watch for is the specific employment related legislation in your province and how how does that apply so you may want to listen to this lecture get the principles and then review uh, your specific legislation in your province but the examples we're giving here are uh, relating to um, Ontario legislation um, so why is this important it's a fundamental issue why is it a fundamental issue because if you end up choosing the wrong court it could have significant negative consequences uh, towards the outcome of your case and one of the consequence could be that your case may simply get thrown out you fight your case all the way and you're before the judge and at that time you may realize and the judge may point this out that he or she does not have any jurisdiction meaning does not have the power to give you what you're asking and so you have wasted significant time and money uh, to fight or pursue the case in that specific court um, the other the other factor to keep in mind is additional cost of course the time and the cost so if you are in the wrong court and let's say you have the opportunity to withdraw the claim from that court and go to the right one by that time you have incurred some you know costs that uh, you cannot recover and of course you have lost time but another thing that can happen is that you may not if you end up in the wrong court or wrong judicial um, setting wrong judicial body you may lose the opportunity to get out of there and go to the right one and you may be stuck in that specific jurisdiction where you have commenced a court action and it could have significantly uh, grave consequences if that's the case and we will give you we'll explain that to you by way of an example further down the line but let me sort of uh, give this um, give this point a meaning so let's look at employment standards act uh, I've pulled it out here already this is the legislation that applies to Ontario employees called Employment Standards Act. You can Google it, you can find it. If you um, scroll down to section 97 right here, um, sub 1, an employee who files a complaint under this act with respect to an alleged failure to pay wages or comply with Part 8 benefits plan may not commence a civil proceeding with respect to the same matter. So it's exactly say, covering what I just said, that if you have file a complaint under the Employment Standards Act, then you cannot go to court. A civil proceeding is going to court. So you cannot go to court. You have the choice of either this or going to the court. But here's the part that I wanted to want you to look at more closely, which is subsection 4, um, withdrawal of complaint. So despite subsections 1 and 2, an employee who has filed a complaint may commence a civil proceeding with respect to a matter described in those subsections if he or she withdraws the complaint within two weeks after it is filed so it is very clear that once you file a complaint with the ministry of labor you literally have the window of two weeks to withdraw that complaint and if you don't withdraw it in case when, when you realize that you have to go to court and not to the ministry of labor then you literally have two weeks to withdraw it and and uh, if you don't withdraw it then you are stuck with the jurisdiction of employment standards act and as I said, we'll explain to you how massive this issue could be um, once we cover, um, you know, an example. So no, op no opportunity to go to another court. And then if you are in, end up in the, in the wrong court or the wrong judicial body, uh, there may be a situation where your damages could be significantly less. So there's a lot to lose um, if you choose the right or the wrong court or judicial body. So it's a it's a it's an important issue that you need to deal at the outset of uh, your case before you actually even go and file your complaint uh, with a court. Here are some scenarios that we'll cover today. Um, if you are a unionized employee or non-unionized employee, where do you go to um, 
whether you go to court or Ministry of Labor, that's another topic we'll cover here. Um, whether you go to court or Human Rights Tribunal, whether you go to CLC, CLC essentially means Canada Labor Code. It's a legislation just like um, the Employment Standards Act that I showed you. You can look it up online. Canada Labor Court versus Court or Tribunal or Ministry of Labor. Then uh, the issue about choosing between Ontario Human Rights Tribunal versus Canada Human Rights uh, Commission um, and Small Claims Court versus Superior Court. So we'll cover these topics. Let's get right into these. If you are a unionized employee, very important to keep in mind, the only place, the only process that is open to you if you are terminated, it's called arbitral process. And it's through the union. You cannot commence it through your own uh, private lawyer. What you do through your union is you file what's called a grievance. And that's why this process is also called grievance arbitration. So you file a grievance through your union against your employer and it goes through the arbitration process. You do not have, as an unionized employee, to go to court, to go to another tribunal or judicial body or even to labor board. The only option you have is uh, is grievance arbitration. And, and uh, I'm emphasizing this because a lot of times we get calls from unionized employees who call them and who want us as private lawyers to get involved in their issues and we advise them that we cannot they must go through their union um, and for their representation and quite frankly that's why they have been paying their dues so that they could get uh, representation through union lawyers but there are exceptions and the only exception you have is if you have a human rights case so if you believe that you have been discriminated um, and you want to bring a complaint with the Human Rights Tribunal, you have that option. You can retain uh, your own lawyer or paralegal and file a complaint with the Human Rights Tribunal of Ontario, or you can do the grievance arbitration. You can't do both. So keep that in mind that you have the choice of either doing grievance arbitration or going to Human Rights Tribunal if you have a discrimination case. You cannot do both. If you have filed a grievance and you want to go to the tribunal, you have to withdraw it and, and there has to be certain consequences of that withdrawal, how far it is in that process. And similarly, if you have filed a human rights complaint and it's it's being pro processed, you may not have the option to then file a grievance. It's one of the two, uh, which brings me to the next point that there's no option of having duplicitous proceeding. What that means is you can't sort of take uh, two shots, uh, two kicks at a can, right? So you can't go to the tribunal, uh, you know, maybe not remain unsuccessful with your case and then you decide that you want to go to the grievance process so you don't have that opportunity. There is another exception which is called DFR applications. DFR stands for Duty of Fair Representation. This is a basic duty that a union has towards its union members and, and that is to fairly represent them. And if you are a unionized employee and you believe that your union is not fairly representing you, then you can bring a DFR application in front of labor board and that's a separate topic, but that's another exception that you can have. So the key to remember is that if you're a unionized employee, arbitral process is the one that's open to you. Um, the only exception is really a human rights complaint. So you cannot go to court. Um, let's go to the topic number two, which is choosing between the court and the Ministry of Labor. This is um, an issue that is very common. We see this all the time. What happens is an employee gets terminated. Uh, they go online, they Google um, the, the topics, they research it, they find out that uh, they have access to Ministry of Labor where they can file their complaint and they believe that they will you know, save time and money um, and, and, and go to Ministry of Labor and have them deal with this matter. And sometimes, actually in 99% of the cases, um, it is not worthwhile to go to Ministry of Labor for wrongful dismissal issues. You may be better off in going to court because the remedies that are in court are a lot more than what Ministry of Labor uh, can 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 give you, and and especially with respect to termination. So, um, why is that? Because the jurisdiction, the power of the Ministry of Labor, is 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 literally what is prescribed under Employment Standards Act, right? So this is the legislation. 
this legislation, the four corners of this legislation decide what a Ministry of Labor Employment Standards Officer can and cannot do. So the Ministry of Labor does not have common law remedies, right? So does not have the power to work common law remedies. A lot of technical information here, but what does this all mean? Let's let's look at an example. Let's say you're an employee who made sixty thousand dollars per annum. Um, you worked for your company for about let's say twenty years, and you got terminated. If you go to Ministry of Labor and file an Employment Standards Act complaint, then the termination pay you will be entitled to if you are successful is eight weeks of pay which let's say is approximately ten thousand dollars if you have a, a case in, in court for common law rights which may be the situation in your case then you could be entitled to as high as two years of pay which is about hundred and twenty thousand dollars so as you can see by choosing to go to Ministry of Labor uh, and not going to court, you may end up losing $110,000. This is just an example to give you a sense of how significant um, you know, the difference is in terms of what you choose, which court or which body you choose. So th this is a significant amount of money. So that's uh, what you may end up losing if you if you incorrectly choose the Ministry of Labor route as opposed to going to court. So, and and, and we get because we have experienced this issue a lot in our practice, we know that a lot of people make this mistake that they end up um, making a complaint with Ministry of Labor, and then as you know, you have literally two weeks to withdraw that complaint. They realize after a month or a month and a half that the process is too complicated and they need a lawyer's assistance. They contact us or another employment lawyer. And at that time, they realize that they have lost the window of opportunity to go and file a, a case in court and, and obviously uh, losing significant remedies. So very important at the outset to figure out whether Ministry of Labor is the right place for you to go to or you should be going to court. So that's a consideration to have at the time of termination. Um, another example is is for employees whose employers are federally regulated, right? So if you're fed, if you work for a federally regulated employer, then you, then you then you are governed by Canada Labor Code, not Employment Standards Act. Um, and so, under Canada Labor Code, there is a specific term that's called unjust dismissal, and unjust dismissal is not equal to wrongful dismissal. They are two different concepts. Unjust dismissal has a specific meaning. So if you are a federally regulated employee, you have to be careful whether you can, you can certainly file a wrongful dismissal uh, complaint uh, or, or, or a court action, but are you, do you qualify for unjust dismissal complaint under Canada Labor Code, which will be filed with the, with the, with the federal employment standards uh, branch and some of the things that you have to consider are you have to be a non-managerial employee you cannot be a managerial employee and seek uh, or file a complaint for unjust dismissal the advantage of unjust dismissal complaint is that um, you have a right to reinstatement if if you if the decision is in your favor uh, so you can get your job back which is not something you could get ordinarily in court the court does not award jobs back they just give you damages and then you can get loss of the income award which could be much significant than what you can get in court so this is one situation where you may get better results than in court by filing a complaint uh, under Canada Labor Code so something uh, for federally regulated employees to to consider before they decide um, which uh, which body which court they want to go to and and under Canada Labor Code if you Google it on uh, Canly and look it up you you have literally 60 days from the time you are dismissed you are terminated to actually file a complaint under Canada Labor Code and if you have missed that 60 day opportunity then you won't be able to do that so again something to consider seriously um, if you have <clears throat> excuse me if you have um, a, a case for discrimination um, under you know human rights code or or, or or human rights act depending upon whether your employer is federal or provincial you will go to 
um, either the tribunal in Ontario or to Canada Human Rights Commission, right? So if your, um, if your employer is federally regulated, then you go to Canada Human Rights Commission. If it's provincially regulated, then you go to Human Rights Tribunal. And the two have different legislation. They have uh, different processes, different remedies. So you have to be careful which body you go to um, with respect to your discrimination case. Another thing to consider is small claims court. So a small claims court in Ontario, um, in case you know, has the jurisdiction to award damages of up to $25,000. So if you believe your case is less than $25,000 or $25,000, then you can go to small claims court. But if it is more than $25,000, then you want to go to superior court of justice. Um, another factor to consider is the kind of claims you have. So um, when your lawyer is considering, it's not only the wrongful dismissal, but he or she will consider if there are damages for any bad faith conduct, uh, bad faith, or discrimination issues, which can get tagged along. And then the total damages may be much higher than $25,000. And so you may be better off going to Superior Court. So something to consider uh, in choosing whether you want to go to Small Claims Court or Superior Court for your wrongful dismissal. So what I want you, um, we've covered a lot of topics in, in, in this lecture. And, and the reason why I wanted to touch upon all of these was that I at least wanted to, wanted you to take away the 30,000 feet view that if you are dismissed and you are considering a court action or filing a complaint of some kind, you must at the outset decide where, um, what is the appropriate forum that you want to go to. And if you're not clear yourself about it, uh, this may be a time to go seek a legal advice or a consultation with an employment lawyer. Because in, in my practice, I've, I've seen uh, even lawyers who do not practice employment law, let's say they're commercial litigators or, 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 or infrequently practice employment law, um, sometimes they don't have a, a clear understanding of choosing the right forum and it can have significant consequences for their clients. So something, um, it's, it's n nothing that you cannot, un you know, you cannot understand. It's unfortunately that that's how the processes are set up and, and they're a bit complicated. So you got to, untangle those before you choose the right forum. So keep that in mind. If you are wrongfully dismissed, then you want to decide on the appropriate forum before you proceed and not once you have commenced the process because then that may be a bit too late. Hopefully this was useful. If you have any comments, please do send us an email. Uh, if you require consultation on any of these issues, by all means, book a consultation through Clarity or feel free to contact us through our law firm and we'll, have, we'll be happy to assist you. Thank you, and we look forward to uh, seeing you in our one of the next videos.